women you have today. Coast to Coast AM. Connie Willis here. Happy Halloween. More to come with the EVPs and Paranormal Pete. But before that, just a reminder of uh, wanting to know what this bumper music is or any of the things that you hear throughout tonight. You can go to our website. It's going to tell you about that. You can specifically find that if you're going, hey, where do I listen when I go to another state? That's really easy, but I'll also let you go. Always, if you forget to go to coasttocoastam.com, our website, It'll tell you what stations are close by, or you can just find it on the internet. It's as easy as that. But our website is wonderful. We have so many great things. You can find out what's going to what's going to come up, who's going to come up next. In fact, George Norrie has uh, Robert Bigelow coming up next week. So that's a that's a, that's a biggie to talk with him. Always interesting to hear from the billionaire guy that uh, wants to communicate and um, ETs as well as life after death. In fact, years ago, I spoke to him briefly on the phone about that particular thing right after my dad had passed and uh, told him a little bit about learning more of that, hearing my dad right after he passed and communicating with him. And he said something about, uh, Bigelow said something like, uh, uh, hang in there, you're on the right track, don't stop. And uh, here he is still talking about that kind of thing and George Norrie will have them on Wednesday. So go to our website at any time and see all the great things that our webmasters put together. It's coasttocoastam.com. We've got a great healing story. Carnivora in the house. One of those botanicals that is so absolutely so amazing. David, you're a guy that has overcome severe issue. I got to go uh, the, light, the light bulb went on and I started to research a found out that saved Ronald Reagan's life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a wonderful thing that is bringing me back and it's been almost eight years now. How did you yeah. take it? Did you take the liquid? Did you take the capsules? I was going through the capsules like uh, I couldn't get enough. It made me feel so much better. How soon after you began taking the capsules, you kind of felt this was going to be a good thing? Six months, eight months. I can only tell you one thing. The product works. And it not only works in one way, it works in a whole bunch of different ways because it gives me energy. Mm -hmm. It gives me vitality. It's giving me my health. So did you have tests to validate it? And if so, did you then oh, have yeah. tests afterwards for the doctors to no. a clean bill? I am pretty a better way. Mm -hmm. Carnivora has built everything back into my body. It's taken a while, but you know what? It's back sure. there and I feel it. I can't say I'm not. George here. You heard it here first, folks. Many more to come. Call 1-866-836-8735. That's 1-866-836-8735. Or visit Carnivora.com. That's C-A-R-N-I-V-O-R-A.com. Call now.
fever is the leading symptom of COVID and the flu. And the only way to reliably detect it is with an accurate thermometer. Be vigilant and be accurate with the Exergen Temporal Scanner, whose accuracy has been proven in more than 100 clinical studies. Don't rely on non-contact thermometers. They are proven to be inaccurate and will not reliably detect a fever that might mean COVID. Be sure to seek medical advice at the first sign of fever. Learn more at exergen.com. Coast to Coast AM, Connie Willis here. Happy Halloween. Yep, yep, I guess it's over in some people's areas, but I don't know. I don't know. It still goes for as long as you, you know, don't go to sleep. As soon as you go to sleep, wake up, then it's over. That's how you look at it. So those of you awake, happy Halloween. Connie Willis here with Paranormal Peace. Okay. Yeah. So we have these EVPs, right? You get some spooky disturbing ones, I'm, I'm telling you that. Time flies, so we only have so much time left with you. This is interesting, you guys, because this is what, you know, there's a whole lot of behind-the-scenes stuff from everything that you ever hear or see, uh, you know, in general anyway, but even here on Coast to Coast. And it's interesting enough. <laughs> I'm, I'm telling on you, Pete. I'm telling on you. Not that I'm really telling on you, but it's, it's, it's kind of funny. Um, it's interesting, right? <laughs> so, uh, so you know, as as you coordinate the shows and you make things work, and you're with me, right, Pete? I hear you chuckling yeah. over there a little bit. Okay. So, so as as you put everything together and you coordinate, you know, everybody's in a different state, everybody's somewhere else, um, and and you got it, you've got to really communicate to make these things happen. So, <laughs> so I get a text <laughs> from Pete. <laughs> Hey, I should let you know, basically, <laughs> that one of these clips, <laughs> there's a ghost that yells and, and curses, <laughs> and he, he hasn't quote the curse, and there's no beep on it, so we're going to skip that one. <laughs> yeah. That's what you got to do, you got to put a little beep on it. get in trouble. <laughs> yeah, you got you to you gotta put a little sensor, like, beep, when, it, when you send that out, <laughs> and say the beep was not included. I had to do that myself. But you actually did have a... Uh, Spirit or somebody cuss at you guys? Oh, yes. I've had that happen multiple times. <laughs> this particular one <laughs> took place um, at a brewery in Pozo, Washington. Oh. And I, I won't say the word, but you kind of hear everybody in this place. We were doing an investigation and they were open. And <laughs> But there's this somebody, this male, yells, Hello! And nobody reacts to it. And then he says, get the bleep out of here. <laughs> nobody reacts to it. Everybody keeps going on with what they're doing. And uh, I, I just realized, oh, no, that, that is a bad word. <laughs> <laughs> well, we appreciate you catching that beforehand, really. <laughs> we would have went, yeah. what, was that a ghost? No, no. <laughs> Yeah, no, I've, I've heard, uh, you know, a few different times doing ghost box sessions where um, in the Walker Ames house, uh, especially something one particular evening had a horrible smell with it, filled the room with this horrible rotten smell that we were in, and so we decided to start a ghost box session, and this thing said the F word to us a couple of different times, and that kind of told us, well... We're probably not getting a piece of a radio station if it's saying that word. Um, so I, I've heard it before. That sounds demonic is what is coming across to me when you're talking about that kind of stuff. Yeah, you I mean, the smell, smell was... And the curse word. Yeah, the, yeah. And I didn't quite know what to think when that was going on live in the moment because the smell really kind of creeped me out. Um, you know, and then we hear hear the F word <laughs> come through and uh, we also during that experience from a room next to where we were we heard someone cough and all of us investigators were in the one room and so we hear this cough come from behind us and that was even creepier and uh, somebody on the team said are you sick and it had this response that we had to go back and listen to but the response was blood lung 
and which is an old term for tuberculosis. Oh. And then, yeah, and then just, you know, as soon as the session was done, it, the room, energy in the room completely changed, and the smell was just gone, like, instantly. And it was, it was quite an experience, but yeah, we heard, we heard uh, the thing cuffing at us. Hmm. Um, <laughs> can we hear the first one? Yeah. So, so, yeah, so this um, Clip 20 here, it's at this brewery in Tulsa, and I'll just, uh, why don't we play it and then we'll talk about it. Okay. Ooh. So, yeah, <laughs> what's in there seems to be almost slow motion. You can kind of hear everything that's going on in the background, and there's this deep voice, and no idea what it says. Can we hear it again? Ooh, so is that, that the same voice that curses later? No, totally different voice. Um, the one that curses later sounds kind of more like a younger guy. Um, this one, to me... It, what really caught my attention was that it sounds like it's in slow motion. You know, in a movie when they go in slow motion, you know, and it gets kind of funny sounding. Mm -hmm. That's what it sounds like to me, but everything else sounds like normal speed. It's just this one deep voice. And if you want to hear it again. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, do you have a take on it? I have no idea what it says. <laughs> no, but yuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was kind of a creepy one. So, um, Pete, you need to know that I grew up in a haunted house and um, didn't sleep any ever in my life until I went off to college. And the, the first night I woke up from the dorm, I went, man, I, I feel great. And I thought, why, why is that? <laughs> oh, because I never slept when I lived in my home. I was always scared to death. <laughs> Wow. So every yeah, night of your that, life, you know. Yeah. That will tax you for, yeah, that yeah. puts a big impact on just your health, just from lack of sleep. So that's, that's crazy. I'm glad you got away from it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 21 years old, but I look a little older. I just blame it on that. That's what it's all about. So, okay, well, <laughs> we'll skip. Um, so sleep is important for sure. We'll skip uh, the, the cussing, but thank you for the story. That's really funny. And, and actually before, actually with uh, Anthony Sanchez, who was with us before, when we were shooting a film uh, with him and we were in some of these locations, bar-related, they, they there was also a lot of cussing that we had picked up before. Yeah, it, that's just interesting because if, if you look at it from a human standpoint, the spirits are still carrying on in some ways of things that they like to do and oftentimes in a pub yeah you hear not so savory language <laughs> yeah relates and fit and it fits the location yeah 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 exactly well uh to go to another clip here this is at a different place this is at a theater a historic theater and it's not the egyptian but it's up here in washington and the clip 22, I just wanted to play this because to me it sounds like an apportion, like an object appears and makes a noise. And it's pretty clear when you hear it. Let's hear that again. I think I know what you're yeah. talking about. So it sounds like something small clicking. It, is is that it? Like, um, but sound. it also sounds like a. It sounds uh, like yeah, a bottle you, cap. Yeah. Okay. What, what about the tapping before? Was that her or was that not like a pencil? That might have that might have been one of us walking, because um, we didn't hear it when it happened, and I just thought it was interesting because it was three investigators. And then the owner or the manager of the place that was there, and he was in a he was up in the where the concession stand was, a ways away from where we were. And this seemed to happen in the theater, and based on the sound, kind of right next to us. But 
you know, nobody was sitting in a chair popping a soda. <laughs> yeah, let's hear that again. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, one of those random, random sounds that shouldn't be there. Um, which I always find those those to be interesting. And uh, well, let's move down to um, clip 24, and this is a completely different play. And this is up in Fort Townsend. And a lot of listeners out there may have heard of Fort Townsend. It's a very uh, well-known haunted town. Um, there waterfront district is full of old buildings. The place had brothels all over the place, a lot of ruffians. Um, it was just kind of a wild west sort of sort of rough and tumble place. And so in, in this clip where I'm at is at the Jefferson County Museum of Art and History and they actually have a courtroom preserved from the late 1800s, and down in the basement of this place is the Old Town Jail. And there's actually still jail cells down there. And so, in this clip, I was down in the basement, and I was basically standing in front of a museum exhibit talking about all of the quote-unquote working girls in Port Townsend. And they had all these kinds of nicknames posted there of what they were called you know, throughout the history there. And so I asked about one and I happened, I just tried to pick the nicest name I could find from that list. <laughs> and let's see, let's see what you think. <laughs> Is there a sporting girl here? My name's Pete. I think I heard them go, yeah, Pete, right here. I'm your sporting girl. <laughs> Is that what I heard? <laughs> well, not, not quite all of that. That would have been pretty incredible to get that response. But oh. I do ask the, the question, and there seems to be a yes response. And it's a female voice. Is there a sporting girl here? My name's Pete. I hear it. I hear it. That's <laughs> Would have been funny. Yeah. Hey, Pete. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. They have these exhibits there that kind of pay homage to everything that they went to. And so that's, that's where I was standing, just kind of outside of where the jail cells are. And uh, and so in the next clip, this is kind of almost right after that, I'm kind of continuing on and asking for a name. And a name seems to come through. So who's here? My name's Pete. Can you tell me your name? I'd love to hear your story. Elena. So, yeah, well, did you heard you, it then. Yeah, did, now did you hear that then or no? No, that was EVP. I totally did not hear that. And are you the only one there? Is there someone else back there talking to, or is that a ghost? There are, there are other investigators in the building. Uh, but nobody was in my immediate area. Oh, wow. Uh, we just got a short time left. Can you can we get to that last one there? Yeah, this one's fun. This is in the preserved courtroom. I set my audio device down, and the whole team and everybody went outside for a while to take a break and to take some pictures, and you'll, you'll hear a voice. Okay, let's, okay, let's try that again. Yep, yep. <laughs> Sounds almost like a little parrot. Hey, Pete! <laughs> uh, yeah, that's what I heard, too. And the interesting thing is, is I put this in here to play for everybody tonight because it very much matches the one that was taken in the Walker Ames house. Uh, last October, where you hear the tour group laugh, and then there's this, hey, Pete. It's, it's almost the same sort of thing. And so I, when I listened, this is a recent investigation, and when I went through my audio, I was like, oh, my gosh, is somebody following me? <laughs> you, they, you know what, you, well, you do mention I'm Pete, I'm Pete, I'm Pete a lot. Mm-hmm. You know, people are picking up on that, I guess. I, uh, You know what? I like that, though. That's, 
That's kind of cool. Yeah, yeah, and, and I do, you know, uh, try and, and make it known when I'm investigating who I am, what I'm doing, what tools I'm using, what they do, and I've just found that uh, that really works for the other side. If you just let them know really what you're doing, uh, they may try and communicate with you. Well, I know you have a ton of stories to tell. I don't know if you can tell one in, in a minute. Are you able yeah. to do that, one of your spookiest? Yeah, I can. Uh, this involves an apparition in the Walker Ames house, which is more rare to see an apparition. Basically, I had a small tour group, some of my family, and we were in the front foyer of the house. Right behind me, directly behind me, was a hallway that leads to the kitchen. In that hallway is what they call the old servant staircase. And that is a location we don't enter because that's where our long-term residents uh, like to go and not be bothered. So I was standing kind of just in front of the base of that staircase. We did have the lights off. I had a flashlight on. I started to talk about the history of the house, and we heard like a, a dragging noise come from behind me. So instinctively, I turned to my right with my flashlight to see what this noise was, and there was a woman standing there with kind of disheveled brown hair. My flashlight beam hit her directly in the eyes and she did not flinch. She was just looking straight ahead. Everybody in the room gasped, including myself. <sighs> as soon as we gasped, she was gone. Oh. Another one, real don't quick, know, real quick. Don't know who it was. Okay, another one. Um, this is in the old automotive station here in Port Gamble. I was working in the back of this place, leaned up against a big carriage door, a wooden carriage door. I had, was cleaning up, I cut some aluminum, so I was cleaning that up. I was using a metal file, a flat metal file, that really didn't work so well, so I walked about six, seven feet away, placed that file on a work table, went back to the pair of sawhorses where I was working, and then all of a sudden something brushed my leg, hit the wall behind me, and then hit the floor. I looked down on the floor, there's a file on the floor, no file on the table anymore, and a dent in the wall. Oh. And so something flung this file across the room at me, or was just a warning shot, because it just nicked my pant leg. Didn't oh know what to about that, but yeah. it was cool. <laughs> uh, it, yeah, absolutely. PortGambleParanormal.com is where you can learn more about Paranormal Pete. Pete, thank you so much for all the EVPs and a couple quick stories. I knew you had a ton of those too, so at least we threw a couple out there for you. Wow, wow. Happy Halloween, everybody. Hope you're enjoying the EVPs, getting a little spook a little bit, you know, for the remainder of your uh, Halloween. Now, coming up next hour, Donnie Most, you know him best, is Ralph Mouse from Happy Days, but he does so much more. He's going to give us the astral readings of some haunted poems, and then somebody else is as well as a very special thing for us here. Happy Halloween! I coast to coast thing. That's what I'm saying. He said Dillaton. A uh, Dillaton's a good word. Now let's know it. I don't have to spell the fancy words I use. John and Ken, <laughs> weekdays two to six on KFI. Why would a plumber just tell me what it costs to unclog my drain over the phone? Is it that complicated? <laughs> No, it's not. It makes no sense at all. They obviously have a price. Whoa, you've got a nice aroma. Who are you? Mike Diamond, the Smell Good Plumber. Will you tell me how much dumps out my drain? $99. But you haven't seen it. Don't need to. Doesn't matter if it's a kitchen sink or a mainline sewer stoppage. The Smell Good Plumbers at Mike Diamond will unclog almost any drain for $99. Almost? Yeah, there are a few exceptions, but you can read all about them on our website before you call. Just go to thesmellgoodplumber.com. Wow, you're like up front and everything. I just called a guy named Bubba who wouldn't tell me anything. No Bubba's here, ma'am. Just professional plumbers who show up on time, smell good, and unclog drains for $99. Call us. 1-800-446-MIKE. Contractor license number 399170. The Delta variant is making COVID-19 spread faster and more easily. Variants can be more contagious, aggressive, and deadly. But we know vaccines work. Vaccinated Californians have greater protection against serious illness, hospitalization, and death. We can help stop the spread and end this pandemic. 
Get vaccinated and wear a mask when it can protect you and others. Find a vaccine near you at myturn.ca.gov. Brought to you by the California Department of Public Health. IQ Air wants to give you the cleanest air possible, and the affordable Autumn Series does just that. The Autumn Desk is a revolutionary air purifier that transforms your workspace into personal clean air zones. Unlike other air filtration systems that may take hours to purify the air, the Autumn Desk begins working immediately. Put it right next to you while you work and create your own personal bubble of ultra-pure air. This game-changing technology has been proven to remove 99% of all airborne pollutants. Visit iqair.com slash US to learn more. Give them a call, 800-500-4AIR, 800-500-4AIR. 500 4247. Ooh, what is that? Oh, the news is ready. KMI, KOSP, 62, Los Angeles, Orange County. It's time for your morning wake up call. And now, here's Jennifer Jones Lee. Twenty twenty one. It was great. Yes. Sixty two kids came to the door. Hey Tyler, how many kids set up your door? Don't do this. You don't want to tell the people? Don't do this to me, Jen. Was it one? Or, or two? I anticipated quite a bit. Mm. I bought two bags of candy. Mm. I had my speaker ready to go promptly at 6 p.m. when the sun started to go down because I was amped to give out candy. How'd that go for you? One group of three kids. Three. 52 to three. I mean, not that it's a competition. <laughs> Somebody asked me, why in the world do you count how many people come to your door? Economic people. Nothing on the crazy person who's trying to figure out how many likes or followers they get. Not that. It's that I need to know how many kids go out in my new neighborhood so that next year I don't overbuy candy like Tyler clearly did. Nobody's convinced, Jen. You do it to play. Okay. Here's what's just ahead on your wake-up call. Well, speaking of scores, the Astros won Game 5 of the World Series. That was kind of fun. Set the game on while you were giving out candy last night. A man's been arrested in connection with a hit and run in Long Beach where six people were injured. A new figure show COVID-19 has killed more than 5 million people around the world in less than two years. 505 will talk with ABC's Karen Travers. First, we'll talk with her about what the president thought about the G20 summit. Did he make progress with other leaders? And we'll follow up about what he hopes to accomplish in Scotland now. We've got this other summit on climate change. So lots to squeeze in with Karen in just a few minutes. Let's start with some of the stories coming out of the KFI 24-hour newsroom. A man's been arrested in connection with a hit-and-run in Long Beach in which six people were hurt. A group of partygoers were standing outside a home about 2.45 yesterday morning. Car plowed into them. Long Beach police say the driver had an argument with a woman, then drove his car onto the sidewalk and hit several people before taking off. He was tracked down and arrested last night in Compton. LAPD officers have shot and killed the man they say had knives and was cutting car tires in Van Nuys. LAPD spokesman Bruce Vorahan says officers responded to a call on Victory Boulevard yesterday and asked the guy a number of times to drop the knives. The officers described those knives as bloody knives. The suspect failed to comply with the officer's orders to drop the knives, and at some point, the suspect advanced towards the officers, and an officer-involved shooting occurred. The man died at the scene. His knives were booked in the evidence. New figures show COVID-19 has killed more than 5 million people around the world in less than two years. Together, the U.S., EU, Britain, and Brazil account for one-eighth of the world's population, but nearly half of all the reported deaths. The U.S. has reco recorded the most deaths, with more than 740,000 people dying during the pandemic. Doctors in Arizona say COVID-19 vaccines are safe for kids. One of them, former U.S. Surgeon General Dr. Richard Carmona, says... The risk from getting COVID-19 or getting vaccinated is small and minor compared to the potential magnitude of an illness that can kill people. The FDA approved Pfizer's kid-sized doses last Friday, and the CDC is expected to make its recommendations tomorrow on who should be vaccinated and with what doses. A fortune teller, a fortune teller in Riverside has been charged with duping a woman into giving him $50,000 to expel parasites from her body and rid her family of a curse. 
Police say he told the woman he needed the money to help her with the imaginary parasite. Police say other fortune teller customers said the man asked them to bring their bed mattresses, which he would then rip open and claim to find a live snake and other demonic things inside. The man was arrested last week. Somebody you can't make that up by. One of five frat brothers charged in the alcohol poisoning death of a student at UC Irvine is asking a judge for misdemeanor diversion. He's trying to escape responsibility. Orange County DA Todd Spitzer says Xavier Brown was the one who gave the alcohol to freshman Noah Domingo, who died in 2019 with a .33 blood alcohol level. He's trying to argue that we should say, oh, for me, focus on his life and how a misdemeanor conviction is going to ruin his life, and he expresses absolutely no remorse. Spitzer says the burden would mean no jail time and wipe Brown's record clean. Hazing was not a factor. Lawyers for Brown have not responded for comment. In Orange County, Corbin Carson, KFI News. When we come back, we'll talk with ABC's Karen Savage about the first part of the president's trip overseas and how he thought that way. That was the G20 summit and follow up with another climate summit, this one in Scotland. Right now, let's say good morning to... Hey, it's Robert Buckley here. We had a crash in Downey on the westbound side of the wall. Five at Lakewood Boulevard. It's a motorcycle down in the left lane. That's got you back up starting at Bellflower Boulevard. Also, a new crash on the southbound side of the 710. This is taking away two left lanes just past Imperial Highway, the northbound side. And that's got you back up right as you approach the scene there as well. We also have a crash in the downtown LA area, northbound side of 110 at 3rd Street. That's locking the off ramp just in line of the ledger on the main line of the freeway belt. And some good news in the Burbank area, 134 westbound Pass Avenue. That crash cleared from the driver covering well. KFI in the sky uh, helps get you there faster. Thank you, Robert. 505 on your wake-up call. Karen Travers, good morning to you. How's your trip going? Pretty good so far. We are now here in Scotland. The president arrived about an hour or so ago and is hitting the ground running, uh, going right to the COP26 climate summit. We're expecting him to go with people more. Oh, yeah, he's massive here at the summit. Okay, so let's talk first about he wrapped up the May 20 summit. Uh, he has some pretty harsh criticism of Russia and China, saying basically they didn't show mm -hmm. up, which is rough because yeah. China's one of the biggest emitters. Yeah, and they didn't show up. You know, President Xi of China has not traveled anywhere outside the country since COVID started. So it wasn't surprising that he was not attending the summit in Rome and then coming to Glasgow for the climate summit. But the president was pretty strong and, and very blunt in his criticism yesterday, saying it was a disappointment that China and Russia were not part of the conversations over the weekend. The table-setting talks about climate change ahead of the big summit here in Scotland. China, as you say, is the world's biggest polluter. So any global effort to address climate change, experts say, has to include China. They have to make big commitments. And that's a big thing we're hearing from all of the experts and advocates we talk to heading into this summit, that it is not enough to continue with the status quo, that the commitments countries around the world back in China are not enough. More needs to be done. Greenhouse gases need to be cut faster, deeper, and there needs to be a renewed commitment to helping poorer countries tackle climate change in their neighborhood. All right. With this particular um, focus now in Scotland, mm -hmm. the president, does he have sort of, I don't know, his credibility on climate yeah. change, you might say, in the balance, considering mm -hmm. will some people say, hey, you couldn't get it done in your own house. Here in the U.S., yeah. you couldn't get a decision made. So why should we be listening to you when it comes to climate change here? It's a great question, and it's one the White House has been getting now for a week. How can the president come to this summit and say that the U.S. is at the center of the global conversation on climate change when his domestic agenda, that social spending plan, is stalled right now? Now, they are anticipating, Democrats in the Hill and the White House, that there's going to be significant movement on that this week. We've also heard that before, so take that with a grain of salt. But as of now, the president's social spending plan has $555 billion for climate investment. So look for the president over the next few days to keep pointing to that, to say it's historic investment, which shows that the United States is ready to lead again on this issue. But a big part of that, too, is that that proposal, that money, there's a lot of incentivizing for utility companies to go towards greener uh, efforts, but it doesn't have punishments. And, and our colleagues to say today that pushed the president on this yesterday, saying experts say we need to carry on this bit to actually make meaningful progress. He insisted that the prayer for is good enough.
All right, we'll see if that is. Thank you, Sam. 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 Thank Saki says they were in the White House, standing more than six feet apart, and wearing masks. She did not travel with the president to the climate summit, so she's not with him right now, but uh, she does have the president. The Supreme Court is due to hear arguments on the law in Texas that the ones where they all abortions in the state. The law outlaws abortions after six weeks of pregnancy. The University of Texas Law School professor Steve Roddick says he thinks the law should be overturned. The Texas case is the direct result. There's no universe. In which Texas is six weeks on a young case of controlled death. The High Court will start hearing arguments today. We'll have a billion years may have slowed. Okay. And many homes are going to go down. Prices are still sky high. According to a recent report by CoreLogic, the median home price in the region reached a record high of more than $688,000 in September, up nearly 13% from September of last year. Home sales, on the other hand, were up only slightly from September of last year seeing just a 0.6% raise. The reason homes are still spending comes down to inventory as there is still a limited supply of homes across the Southland. Blake Trolley, KFI News. Okay, if you want to make yourself feel good today and you own a home, here is what I suggest you do. Remember how sometimes I'll say, if you have a 401k or you have some sort of investment portfolio, don't look at it today. Today, I want you to go to Zillow or whatever, Zillow, Redfin, Realtor, whatever. And look at the price of your house. And see what it was either when you bought it or what it was a year ago, whatever. The prices are silly right now. Silly. In one year, I've owned my home one year down here. Silly how much it has gone up. And well, I love my house. It could not be worth this. Much. It's silly. Compared to this time last year. Was it low last year? Maybe. But uh, you can't have these giant increases in one year. Or can you? Sorry. It's just, it's crazy. So I know maybe the bidding wars are closed, but the prices are, like Blake was saying, the prices are just silly. But my point is, if you want to make yourself feel good, go to Zillow, look at your house price today. You'll be like, ah. You gotta be kidding me.